Welcome back to MMA Oddsbreaker, ladies and gentlemen. I'm uh, Frank Trigg, sitting in bed, uh, actually, trying to mimic what Evan Dunham is doing right now, sitting in bed in Brazil. Uh, I've read some horror stories on Twitter. Some guys saying it took 26 hours and five planes and 45 minutes on a bus and an hour and a half on a train to get to where they're going. How bad was the travel for you? It wasn't that bad, that's for sure. We had three flights. It took us. I mean, I don't know what the total trip was, but it wasn't, it wasn't that bad. You know, it was it was doable, but it was definitely it took a day to recover. What uh, you guys? You left right from Vegas. What was your route like? Uh, I think we went to Detroit and then to Sao Paulo and then then to here. But we didn't have to take any buses or anything. Like, well, we had to take an hour drive once we got here. But it, you know, it, it it is what it is. <laughs> What's the what's the time difference between Vegas and and where you are now? Um, I think it's four hours. Four hours. Uh, is there any jet lag problem? Are you having a, having an issue with jet lag at all? No, I stay up late usually. You know, I notice it a little bit, but we're fighting at like um, I think I'm going to end up fighting around ten thirty, so it shouldn't be a problem <laughs> at all, which would be like six thirty our time. So I don't think it's going to be an issue. What's uh, are you having a problem finding food to eat down there? Or has the food been pretty good so far? Uh, the food's good. Uh, I haven't been problem finding problems with it. I haven't really started my like big weight cut yet. You know, I I'll, I'll start a little bit more tomorrow. Um, the only thing is, it's hard to find uh, meat that's not like pre seasoned and salty. Yeah. Uh, uh, but it shouldn't be a problem. What's uh, what's your weight like today? It's uh, it's Tuesday, and you gotta make weight on Friday. So you're about five days out. What's it, what's your weight like? Uh, I'd like to wake up tomorrow at 68, okay. um, but I was like this morning, like 68 and a half. Oh. So, yeah. Have the workouts been really tough for you, uh, with the time change and all that? Cause that's really light for you coming in. I mean, you, you're one of those guys that when you say you want to wake up at 68 on Wednesday morning, you wake up at 68 Wednesday morning. If you'd wake up just a half pound over that on Tuesday, you're ahead of schedule really on your weight cutting. That that's abnormal for you. Is there, is there... Is that a good sign, or is that a is that a, a, a jet lag I'm training sign? Um, I don't know really what it was. I mean, in general, I was a little bit lighter, but uh, I think I made up for it this evening. I, had, I splurged and had some some salmon a little bit more, so I think I made up half a pound definitely tonight. <laughs> <laughs> good for you. Good for you. Well, uh, obviously, uh, uh, I know this because I actually had to call his phone, but you got uh, Ray Seppos in your corner for this one. Um, yeah. Ray's one of the busiest men that I know right now in MMA between running World Series of Fighting and training pretty much everybody at Extreme Couture that's a pro still. He's hailing everyone, and and he's always on the road. He's always traveling. How is he as a travel buddy, Ray Suffo? Is he difficult to deal with? Does he snore really loud? Does he have bad gas when he's on the plane? Like, What's it like traveling with Ray? No, he's good, man. He doesn't he, – for a big guy, I thought he would snore a lot more, but he, he really doesn't, so he's easy to – easy to travel with he's been everywhere and so we also got robert drysdale down here who speaks portuguese so that makes it really easy and uh kyle griffin and it's, it's been a really easy trip so far to tell you the truth good good it's so obviously uh uh let, let's get into the gritty talk to me a little bit about your opponent break break down daniels for me as you see him when you're watching tape uh you know i see a tough guy that's getting better you know um but you know i'm getting better as well so uh I, I see he doesn't really have any big flaws in his game. You know, he's not one of those guys that's good at one or two things and that's it and has a big hole. So he's an all-around guy. I um, saw an interview on by him where he said he's, you know, it's pretty even all around except he's got better footwork. So I'm kind of expecting him to stay on the outside and jump, lunge in with those pop shots like he did, has done in the past. Um, as far as the ground, he's good on the ground. His wrestling's got a lot better. Yep. Uh, but I think over, overall, I'm, I'm better in every aspect. You know, it's not one of those things where, you know, I'm ten times better at everything. But I, I believe I'm better all around. So <laughs> really, no matter where the fight goes, I, I, I feel a little comfortable with it. No, I, I read a report uh, from a buddy of mine, Gabe Morancy, up in up in Canada, and he said that you win this fight if you play it smart and stand the outside and pick him apart with your new Ray Seppo style of, of kickboxing. We're going to hit him, hit him, hit him. And then all of a sudden you see the big opening, knock him down, but not looking for it early and trying to put him down quick. He said, but you'll lose it if you go back to the old Evan Dunham style where you're like, I'm tougher than you, I'm stronger than you, I'm just going to stand in the pocket, I'm going to throw a bunch of punches. Do you kind of see the same thing in this fight, that if you got to be a little bit smarter now as, as a fighter now that you're older and, 
and even a little bit more wise as a veteran. Do you see the same thing that we see too? Uh, a little bit, you know. I, I think, you know, I think can get right in there and, you know, outbox and however I really need to. It's got, I'm going to kind of play. It's kind of one of those things where I don't have a big bona fide with a set game plan. You know, I, I let mm-hmm. things kind of naturally progress, and then I can kind of see where my openings are and see what's working better for me. So I'm, I'm going to play it by ear. But, uh, you know, I've been in some wars <laughs> that were kind of, you know, self-inflicted. Uh, so, uh, you know, I don't know if I'll go back to that, you know, when, when, you, when you get cut and the blood starts to fly and you start having fun, you know, you really, <laughs> sometimes happens, so. You know, I, I see you train, I watch you train, and I do realize how much smarter and how much better you've gotten as an overall fighter, but I also understand that you fight better when you are in a war and in a battle and having fun getting hit and the blood's flying, so I'm kind of mixed on which way you should actually approach this fight, so I'm actually paying close attention to this fight on Saturday because I'm going to be surprised how you pull it off because I, I have I can see you doing it either way and I'm not sure which way you're going to do it usually I'm pretty good at picking how most guys are going to are going to win the fight but with this one Evan you literally can go either way for me and still win the fight so for me this is a big surprise to watch how this fight pans out you, you yeah, think yeah, yeah. go ahead it should be a fun one yeah, yeah it's, regardless it's going to be fun I think uh they make her a good fight. It's not going to lay down for anybody, and I'm the same way. So, um, you know, I guess I guess I'll be surprised too with with how it goes. I don't know which way it's going to go yet so far. So, uh, I guess we'll find out Saturday night. Okay, last I'll question. Win. That's what I know. Yeah, no, that's all we ever. You know, I never even try to ask it. You know, how how you think the finish is going to go? Because I know all, all the guys I talk to now, everybody's going to win every single fight. So we just got to wait and see how it pans out. But on uh. I don't know if you've been caught in a microchasm down there, but I want to get your opinion on Pat Healy uh, just got caught um, for using marijuana and lost $130,000. I don't agree with the rule. Um, I've been very vocal, and like I don't think that marijuana is a performance-enhancing drug. I've never smoked it. I've never dealt it. I've never dealt with it, but I don't see the benefit of it as a performance-enhancing drug. Do you think the fine taking away that you know, the, the extra money from him and, and like, really digging into his pocket. One, do you think it was too harsh of a punishment? And two, do you really think that marijuana is a PED and should be still treated as a PED? Did he get, did he get cut from the roster? Is that no, no, they, they, they took back his, I think, because oh. I think he won the fight. 130. He won, yeah, he won 130,000. They took the 130,000 back. And that's, like, I mean, that's, I get taking a percentage because that's the fine. Yeah. But they pulled... My, my understanding is right now they pulled all of it back. It's like, well, hold on a second. Like, you can't take everything from me. Like, I did. It's still fight of the night whether I fail or not. It's still a good fight. Yeah. Uh, it's that's a, that's a tough one. You know, I've known that for a long time. I've trained with him. He's he's a he's a good guy. I hear that it's it's, it's unfortunate. Um, you know, I. I'm kind of with you on it. I don't think they should have taken the whole thing. You know, I understand the, I understand the turnover, the decision because it's like a contest now, and um, the pers- taking a percent and that, but taking the whole thing that's that's a little extreme. But uh, my opinion on it is, you know, I could go with ways. You know, I kind of grew up in a city where, where that's kind of the norm. A lot of people, you know, smoke marijuana and that sort of stuff, and so uh, that. Kind of because, you know, if you're going to have to jump, that hoops one of them, you know. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot. And trying to, I mean, it's mainstream, but some people it's not. So, uh, the, you know, this, don't we have a choice to, you know, turn the ball like, and then down to the nitty, you know, um, it's illegal in our country. Yeah. So, um, you know, it's, you know, you know, he's, he's, we know how to end his life. I think it's an actual plan. Um, I don't really think it probably is, but, uh, you know, I understand what it is. I think it's a, still a change, um, that's one of those hoops that we have to yeah, and that's just, it's just, 
it's the rules. It's illegal, and that's just the way it is. You know, same thing with the Diaz brothers and yeah. everybody else. It's just the rule. Whether we agree with it or not, we got to follow it as fighters, and that's just it. Kind of sucks, but oh well. I, I really like Pat Healy, and, and hopefully he's going to come out of this one on top. But um, anyway, uh, good luck this week on Saturday, this weekend. I'll be watching it uh, at Herrera's in the Palms, the new sports club over there, watching uh, watching the fight go off. So I can't I can't wait for your fight. I can't wait to see this whole thing happen. So. Uh, Evan, thanks for coming on here. I know it's late. I know you need to get some sleep, so I really appreciate you coming on here for a couple minutes, and good luck on Saturday. Thanks for having me, Jerry. You got it, bud. Talk to you soon. Yeah.